Hello, Jenna. Hi. I want to know what is your background, where you come from, and what's your favorite food? So, uh, I'm Taiwanese American. So, I was born in Taiwan. I came to the US when I was two, almost three. And I grew up in Maryland, so in the DC area, uh, Potomac, Maryland. And I just was raised there all my life until college. So, in college, I came to Boston to study at Boston University. And um, after four years of undergrad and a lot of decision making and applying to grad schools, I ended up actually staying in Boston University for grad school for another two years. So this is my sixth year of um, being in Boston and I will still be here after like, post-grad because I will be working here now and I have been uh, doing my new job recently for about a month. And. Um, my favorite food, I don't have one favorite food, but I would have to go with like Asian food. My top three Taiwanese food, Japanese and Korean. And I love noodles. So I think like the noodles that they have in the soup, um, no matter what kind of noodles and what kind of um, like Asian food, I would say that's my favorite with some meat and like veggies. So um, yeah, that would be my response. So what are the challenges that you face with, as a musician and how did you overcome them? So there are many challenges, um, but of course, um, even with the challenges, there's still a lot of moments and like I know why I want to do music, so it doesn't make me not want to do music, but it just is hard sometimes. So uh, some of the challenges, I would say like the two of them, for example, um, one of them is just like the time management is really hard, but I've kind of learned to grasp it more during school because you have to. So you're thrown into a situation where you really need to plan out your, your day and like how to schedule everything you want to do and make the best of the time and like fit in time to practice outside of like rehearsals and coachings, for example, or like the concerts. Um, another thing that I want to talk actually more about is um, like your physical health and your mental health. So um, that's actually tied together. So that's actually the biggest challenge for me. Um, being a musician, um, it's actually really physical. We just use smaller muscles. So it's, um, it's a lot of physical strength and endurance. So that's something that um, everyone has to work on. Everyone looks different, a different body type. Like I'm a really small person. So then like playing cello, um, I, I have an injury from it, so that's something that I struggle with, and I can't say I've overcome that because I'm still injured, but I can talk about things that I'm working on that help me. For example, um, well, of course, like physical therapy, but also just like learning how to breathe and like, uh, for example, Tai Chi and yoga, just like learning how to breathe and center yourself to have good sound that's still relaxed and not using so much tension playing. So that's something I'm con consistently aware of and trying to improve that body awareness. So um, I'll just say that that's the main thing. Any influencer or like a musician that really influences your sound and how you play? So, um, I mean, it depends on what music you're playing. I have some different people that I look up to for uh, some inspiration and influence, like you said. But one person I'll talk mainly about is Yo-Yo Ma. I know he's very, very famous and a lot of non-musicians already really love him and he's definitely uh, still very actively performing. And um, I'm gonna talk about him because besides his playing, like his sound, um, you know, his sound touches people. I, I'm inspired to be like that, like a lot of community outreach that he does and traveling and um, he has an ensemble called Silk Road Ensemble which includes a lot of different instruments from different cultures so he's trying to do a lot of like of the traditional classical music but then mixed with like some ethnic music and um, even some a lot of like new music like contemporary stuff that no one has played yet so I feel like uh, he's very open which I like and he's very in touch with other cultures and trying to get to know other people and um, even when he plays for example his solo box suites every time he plays it is very different so that means the people he's met, the places he's been, and, the, and maybe he has other influences that he looks up to have changed his sound. So it's always evolving. So it's not that I'm trying to emulate his sound in any way, but I like his uh, intentions and I am very, very touched by his sound. Sometimes his interpretation, maybe I was surprised about, like I've seen him in concert a few times, but whenever he plays it, even if I like might not have agreed with how he played it, 
when he plays it, I'm like, oh, this makes sense. And I actually really respect the decisions he makes with his like artistic ideas. And I end up really liking it at the end of the performance because he's able to convey his message through his music, no matter um, if it was uh, you know, conventional or unconventional. I tend to always feel like, oh, that is the way it should be played. Like that's the feeling I get after. So I inspire. I'm very inspired by him, and I think I want to be like him because he also seems like just a really smiley, really optimistic person, and um, that's why many Americans like him. So I think that's what I would say. Hey Jenna, can you tell us please your behind the scenes stories that you had as a musician? So, I mean, I've been a musician for many years and I think a lot has happened. So I just picked one story to share. It's just kind of funny and a little silly, but it also makes sense. So I'll just share a story from my freshman year of college. So to give you some context of like a music student's life, we have so many classes and the first class starts at 8 a.m. And a lot of times we're practicing past 12 a.m. after all the school has ended and maybe we have like activities after and then we go back to practice. But there's always something to practice for. So me and my friends would always practice until like 1 a.m. And our class is at 8, right? So so it's a, it's a lot and then, you know, we have to do homework after. So um, we're always so tired in the morning. We wake up at 7 to get breakfast in the dining hall and then we go to class at 8 and it's like always really early so we get home pretty late too so there's not a lot of time to sleep and we're always kind of stressed about having to you know go back to school the next day so one day me and my friend um, she was my best friend in college and it was our freshman year we were not roommates but we both had really bad roommates we both had doubles so unfortunately we both had a really bad roommate situation and um, we didn't like going home in general. We were so busy, but when we were home, we wanted to chill, uh, not have our bad roommate situation, but we did. So we talked about it one day. We were like, what if we just stayed overnight at school? Because we're always there and it's just gonna be easier the next day. Like, what if we just tried to do that? Like there's couches on the second floor of school. Let's just sleep there. So we prepared like one day, I don't remember which day of the week, but it was a school day and we prepared that day to stay overnight. Like we brought a toothbrush, toothpaste, we, we had a change of clothes. Um, obviously we, we didn't get to shower, but we would go back to shower during like the middle of the day at some point. And it was like in the winter, so. Um, and we prepared everything. Like we were ready and we brought like pillows and like blankets and we were like ready to sleep on the couch. So after we had practiced that day, we, we you know, it was just us. At like, I mean, people were practicing, but then eventually they would leave to go home. We stayed. So we brushed our teeth and we got ready for bed. And it was pretty late at that time. And we were, try we were like kind of talking, but we were pre pretty tired. So we're like, okay, we're gonna sleep. And then tomorrow's gonna be great because we're gonna be able to sleep more because we're already at school. So it's gonna be such a good decision. So we both had a couch to ourselves because there's couches facing each other. So we both slept on one, like the full body and like the lights were out and it was fine. But we kept hearing this sound. So there was a, a janitor and they were cleaning the, the school at night. And it's like, you know, past midnight. So we were like, why are they still cleaning? Maybe they'll finish soon. And they kept coming near our area to clean. And it was like dark and everything. And we were just wondering why he keeps coming back to clean. Like, why isn't he going home? We still don't know to this day, but I think he just had to clean throughout the night, I guess. So he just kept on cleaning and it was so loud because we were trying to sleep and he kept coming back even though like, you know, it's not getting dirtier because he just cleaned it and we're not touching anything and like no one else is there. But because of that, we didn't actually end up sleeping at all. So we went to class the next day, really, really tired. And we were like, we're never doing this again. Oh <laughs> so that's God. the story. <laughs> <laughs>